Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations where we tackle everything at DIY and this week we're checking out the latest laser by Sculfin by putting it through its paces and showing you materials that you may not even know that you can cut and engrave. Let's roll the intro and get to testing. Sculfin has sent over its latest offering which is the S30 Ultra 33 Watt Laser and I'm going to put it through its paces today. Yes, I will show you it cutting plywood but I'm also going to show you some really cool materials that you probably didn't even know you could laser. Now the reason why I love the Sculfin brand is because they listen to their users. They are extremely active in the Facebook group and they take on feedback and they use it to improve their next series of lasers and this laser is proof. It's extremely beginner friendly. Honestly, you can be up and running with a project in under an hour as construction only takes around about 40 minutes. Now that I've got it together, let me show you some of the improvements and upgrades that they've made to the laser. Now to start with, Sculfin already offers great baseline features that you're not going to find in other brands like your automatic air assist and lens replacements. You can also get extension frames for your laser to make bigger work area, but I don't think you're going to need it with the S30 Ultra as it offers a work area of 600 by 600. Now in the past with most lasers, the average is around about 400 by 400 and I would often find myself wanting just that little bit more of a work area and this with 600 by 600 solves that problem. The fact at the top of this video I said the power of this laser is 33 watts blows my mind because it was only a little over 12 months ago that we were looking at lasers that were 5 and 10 watts and in the past if you wanted to upgrade your laser heads you also had to switch out other parts on the laser and if you're a beginner honestly it just sounded scary and daunting but you no longer need to worry about that. Moving forward when new laser heads are replaced you'll be able to connect them straight into the connector that Sculfin has designed. You won't have to switch out other parts which makes it far easier if you're a beginner and also even if you're an advanced person and you're using different laser heads for different jobs, it will be much easier to switch out in the future. This might sound silly, but something that I have not liked about Sculfin lasers since the beginning is they've never created a storage place for the column that you need to set the height of the laser. And on the S30 Ultra, they have finally created a home for the column. And let's face it, if you don't know where to put this guy, you're going to lose it. And you need it on every project as you need to set the height of the laser. So to have somewhere to call at home, at least for me and hopefully for you, it stops endless wandering around the workshop for 20 minutes trying to find where you put it down. Up front, we have some new safety features with the addition of emergency stop and the ability to be able to lock the laser and take the key with you so that if you're not around, no one can be using the laser. You can also now connect via Bluetooth as they've added in the antenna, which means you can now wirelessly connect to the laser. Now, like I said before, you're getting upgraded power in your laser head at 33 watts because in the past, the most we could get was the S30 Pro Max at 20 watts. Now, it should be noted, in the Ultra series, they also offer an 11 watt as well as a 22 watt laser head. And at the end of the video, I'll get into what I think each of those laser heads are best used for. The first thing I like to do on every laser that I get is a three mil plywood test panel. And if we take a look at it on the 33 watts, I can cut through in one pass at 200 millimeters a minute and at 25% power. Now, like I've said in the past, these test panels are a really great starting point for your settings, but I don't find that they represent 100% real life. For real world testing, let's have a look at this lampshade that I've cut out for my nieces and nephews as I've cut this same design out a bunch of times on different lasers in the past. Now, previously on lasers, I have to run a speed setting of somewhere between 500 and 700 millimeters a minute, and at 75% power, I can cut through in anywhere between two and four passes. Whereas with the 33 watt machine, I can run at 900 millimeters a minute and at 75% power, I'm getting clean cuts through in just two passes. So it's a really efficient machine if you're going to be cutting, but there is one large drawback that I want to note. At 33 watts, this machine produces a ton of smoke and fumes. You really don't want to be running this machine in anything other than an enclosure where you're venting the smoke out. And if you're not running an enclosure, you want to be in an extremely well-ventilated area with fans blowing the smoke away from you. It is not something you want in your lungs. Diode lasers are capable of cutting and engraving a bunch of different materials. And I remember as a beginner being extremely overwhelmed at the possibilities because honestly, they're endless. So to help you get you started, I have taken a walk through Ikea and picked out some things that I think are pretty cool and that I can start engraving right away. The first one is this side table. $25 for a side table? 
That is a steal if you ask me and I think I have taken it from generic to unique by engraving this graphic onto the front of it. It is made of metal and all we're doing is lasering off the top coat and revealing the metal underneath. But now I have a really cool piece for my living room and a talking point for when my friends and family come over. I don't know about you, but I see a ton of people online using vinyl cutters to create labels. And yeah, they're cool, but what about if you could also use the laser? I picked up these jars that have a bamboo lid and I use them to store sandpaper in the workshop. I've lasered the label onto the lid so at a quick glance I can see what grit sandpaper's in the jar and grab it and keep moving. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you'll know that we have a new addition to the family, which is Sherbet. She's our six month old miniature schnauzer and she is in full training mode. And this next project is for her. We have snap blocks around the house that have treats for all of her good behavior, but we wanted to take it one step further. And I picked up these cool jars that have cork tops. Now cork is a really versatile material for the laser as you can cut it as well as engrave it. So on the jar tops, we've engraved some of the commands that we use for Sherbet and her training, and they look much much nicer around the house than the current snap locks that we have. Acrylic is another great material. It's super tough and you can use it on a bunch of different projects, but it does have a drawback. By far, one of the biggest questions I get asked is can these machines cut clear acrylic? And the answer is no, no diode machine will be able to cut it because it can't see it. It's going to work best on really dark colors with your best results being black. Now in saying that, you can engrave on clear acrylic as well as glass, you're just gonna have to apply a finish to it first. Something like black spray paint, because then the laser can burn that finish into the surface. Now I've been able to use black acrylic and create a really cool keyring with a saying that we have in the Small Fry Workshop, which is mistakes are proof that you are trying. It's something I try to live by so that I don't get upset when I make a mistake. And now I've got it on my key, so when I'm out and about, I can be reminded of it as well. A material that you may not realize you can engrave is stainless steel and the diode lasers do a really nice job at engraving on this material. I do have a tip for you though, you want to lower your line interval. As a default, it's set to 0.1, but I would recommend lowering it down to 0.8 or 0.9 and you'll tighten up those lines which will result in a really nice engrave. I was able to pick up this knife set and engrave the word enjoy with some graphics onto the handle, which I think is a really nice way to personalize a gift. Overall, the S30 Ultra 33 watts golf and laser is a fantastic machine. And hopefully today I've been able to show you some materials that you didn't even know that you can laser on. Now the question you have to ask yourself if you've decided that diode lasers are for you is what power do you need? And the Ultra series has a couple of different options. The 11 watt is gonna be fantastic if you're mainly looking to engrave. The 22 watt is a really great hybrid for cutting and engraving. And if you're looking at going all in and getting really fast cuts with great engraves, then the 33 watt machine is an absolute beast and totally capable but like I said before you're really going to want to operate these machines in an enclosure if you can and lucky for you I've got a video coming out shortly with my DIY laser enclosure so if that's something you're interested in be sure to be subscribed to the channel if you're looking at purchasing a laser I've got links linked down in my video description and thank you Skolfin for supporting my channel and if you've liked this video hopefully you found it a little inspirational help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons or better yet go and watch one of the videos that's about to pop up on your screen and I'll see you on the next one.